Hi everybody, Jonathan here with a new Twin Motion 2023 video and today's pretty exciting. It's the first chance I've had to have a look at my new PC with Twin Motion and have a look explore of the new path tracing functions. So the previous videos you will have seen were done on my Mac and I'm now basically looking forward to trying out the new path tracing on my beast of a PC. So I think you'll be blown away by the image quality and both the speed. So let's get into this video and thanks for watching as ever. If you're new around here, please do subscribe and like the video, it really, really helps. But let's get into this and I've got lots more videos planned soon. So thanks for watching, bye bye. Okay, so what we're going to do is open up some of these new templates from the home screen. Now I quite fancy a look of this new product work table scene. So I'm just gonna open this one up and this is what I'm going to use to do my sort of initial path tracing tests. Now, for those of you who've not seen the new version of Twin Motion, do check out my other video, which really kind of breaks down the interface in detail. Um, so we're not really going to do that on this particular video. It's just a short one, really, just to test the path tracing. So what I'm going to do is go and hide that navigation palette. Do notice that you can actually set that to your favorite software. Of course, for mine, it's Vectorworks. And OK, so here is the path tracing button. Um, let's just basically click that and enable the path tracing. Now you might be interested to know that path tracing and ray tracing are actually two slightly different techniques that are used in sort of video game and 3D rendering production. Basically path tracing is what they call a Monte Carlo technique and uses the computer graphics to produce three-dimensional images and accurate global illumination. The approach involves integrating all the illuminations reaching a single spot of an object's uh, surface. Now the difference with ray tracing is that it's an advanced rendering technique that creates realistic light and shadows in a scene. The technique also mimics how light behaves in the real world, but the algorithm traces a route of a beam of single light as it bounces around that physical world. Now for the, most of you that's quite deep and for most of you you won't really be able to tell the difference between path tracing and ray tracing but I think it's important to understand that there are differences here so definitely have a look into that in more detail if you're interested. Okay so as you can see I've just opened up the quality setup and um, basically I'm just going to go into my quality settings and just sort of check what settings we've got here. Um, so you've got the new interface scaling which I showed in my previous video there which I absolutely love. We've also got the quality settings and because I'm on my PC with a nice graphics card, I can set that right up to ultra. Now I did notice um, when I actually tried to modify the uh, scaling, basically it wouldn't um, allow me unless I kind of restarted. So that's interesting. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Um, and it looks like you have to kind of do that restart to change advantage um, of the new DirectX or the old DirectX even. Anyway, let's just set it back to the settings it was on before and I'm going to go for everything on Ultra. Now, if you also go into your preferences, you will notice that there's lots of other kind of options in here, including uh, things like the units. Now, I'm not sure why millimeters is not included in there. Please do that in the next version. And basically, here is the DirectX settings there. We've also got a new setting for multi-GPU. So that means I think if you've got like two GPUs with an SLI bridge, um, basically you can ma manage the sort of power of both of those graphics cards. Now here we are in the path tracing settings themselves. Now one little tip that I would give you is definitely to change the presets of the low and maybe even the medium to quite low so that you're, when you're working you can actually work kind of really rapidly in low settings with the path tracing basically interacting um, and as soon as you click R you'll notice the path tracing sort of comes on. So there's a little preview button up there and when the tick is on that means that basically it's finished the path tracing. You can see I can almost work in real time and get a really pretty good impression. Obviously you get a little bit of that kind of graininess that you would expect before it kind of completes the rendering. Um, but basically yeah this is absolutely awesome. I'm able to work almost in real time using the new path tracing in low and possibly medium settings now. Now, the speed of path tracing is going to be determined by both the settings, but also the power of your GPU. Uh, but look at the quality of this image. I'm super impressed. It actually looks absolutely incredible. 
Um, I'm not sure who made this scene, but all credit to them. Um, I really like the new pop-up of the media tab and you can see down at the bottom we've got a few different kind of views here. So what I'm going to do is actually keep that original one and duplicate it and just make a few sort of tweaks of my own as we go through this sort of process. So when we pop up the scene panel you can see that we can now adjust all those render settings all in one place both for the uh, real time but also for the path tracing as well. So this is absolutely a very nice improvement. The fact you've actually got the uh, kind of ability to set the real time and the path tracing separately, I think that's cool. And then basically we can actually go through to the quality of the image. Now I'm gonna render these out at 4K to begin with, but later on we're gonna do a little test with an 8K. So let's go ahead and click export our first 4K image. We'll select our image and basically there we go. All we need to do is click the file format, um, PNG or JPEG, and let's just set up a little folder for this export. So I'm really excited to see how this first uh, image will render and how long it will take using 4K and high quality settings. I think I've gone for 500 samples for my actual final quality path tracing. As I say, when you're working in the viewport, you really don't need anything near that to get a very, very good preview. Um, so here we can see twin motion absolutely ripping. Um, my graphics card is ripping through that image in just a few seconds. Now I've got a 2080 Ti, it's a 12 gigabyte graphics card from a few years ago. I mean obviously now we're on the 4080 series so things have moved on quite a bit since then. Um, but it's still a really good graphics card and it, you know, it gives me incredible performance. And wow, look at this awesome new image. And when I zoom in, because it's 4K, you can see I've got a really nice level of quality. I love those new reflections, new mater materials and metals. And it just looks so realistic with the kind of uh, reflectivity and things like the global illumination. Okay, so what we'll do now then, we'll go ahead and basically um, set up a new image. Let's basically edit this one. And I'm keen to kind of rename this one and just call this an 8K. So all we need to do is click onto the image settings, drop down to the default 8K. And by the way, you can actually render right up to 16K and beyond using a new tiled rendering setting. I mean, the only time you'd need to do that, honestly, is if you're rendering some massive billboard um, or huge kind of definition TV um, and you need something super high. So cranking the quality of the renderings up and also the max bounces now and those adjust those settings. Let's go ahead once again and just export this image and we'll take a look at how long this 8K image takes to render as well in a second. So as you can see, uh, the estimated time is now being prepared and basically, of course, you're going to expect an 8K path traced image with pretty high settings to take a little bit longer. So in the meantime, let's kind of dash down and take a little look at the system. And basically you can see it's gonna take, um, it's estimating about five minutes. So what we'll do, we'll jump ahead and we'll come back again and look at the quality of that and I'll report back. Now you'll notice that up in the statistics panel is where you can actually see the statistics. But also if I go into my little NZ XT cam, uh, this is basically the spec of my computer. So I thought it might be interested to see that. So there's my Ryzen 9 processor, my uh, Geoforce RTX 2080 Ti 12 gigabyte card from a few years ago. Now the main thing you can see is that the CPU is really not doing much. Okay, so if you're gonna buy a computer for rendering specifically for twin motion, it's all about the GPU guys. Make sure you get a best graphics card you can afford at the time and definitely get something with ray tracing capability. Okay, so the image is finished. Here we are zooming in to the 8K image and you can see there is just so much detail and so much quality in this image. I'm honestly blown away by the speed. It's only taken about five minutes to render and we can basically just keep zooming, zooming in because of these endless sort of 8K pixels. Now you'll notice that if you go up, it will basically give you some statistics and you can see, okay, it was seven minutes in the end to render that 8K image. But you know, I've been doing rendering uh, a long time in my architectural career, and I can tell you, I've been used to waiting a lot longer than that. So if we kind of really zoom in, you can see things like the anti-aliasing is really good. 
The quality of those shadows looks amazing. The color production and the global illumination and oh my goodness, these reflections that you get with path tracing. Okay, so that was actually the 4K image. Now let's look at the 8K image and see if we can see the difference. And wow, we can. When we zoom in, you can really tell with that amount of extra pixels and that sort of extra anti-aliasing and the crispness that you get. Those reflections and global illuminations just look absolutely stunning. I mean, this really is a really great scene and I'm very, very impressed by the quality that I'm seeing here. So I think it's definitely a really kind of nice way for you to uh, test the path tracing capabilities and refine those processes before you kind of move on to your own scenes. Well, everybody, I do hope you've enjoyed this short video just showing the new demonstration scene and the capabilities of the path tracing in Twinmotion 2023. So make sure if you're new around here, you subscribe to the channel. I've got tons more videos planned for you and super excited to get using it on my new architectural projects as well. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.